fourth graders, happy Wednesday. I am going to go ahead and continue reading to you Sarah Plain and Tall. Chapter 2. Caleb and Papa and I wrote letters to Sarah, and before the ice and snow had melted from the fields, we all received answers. Mine came first. Dear Anna, yes, I can braid hair and I can make stew and bake bread, though I prefer to build bookshelves and paint. My favorite colors are the colors of the sea, blue and gray and green, depending on the weather. My brother William is a fisherman, and he tells me that when he is in the middle of a fog-bound sea, the water is a color for which there is no name. He catches flounder and sea bass and bluefish. Sometimes he sees whales and birds too, of course. I am enclosing a book of seabirds, so you will see what William and I see every day. Very truly yours, Sarah Elizabeth Wheaton. Caleb read and read the letter so many times that the ink began to run and the folds tore. He read the book about seabirds over and over. Do you think she'll come? asked Caleb. And will she stay? What if she thinks we are loud and pesky? You are loud and pesky, I told him. But I was worried too. Sarah loved the sea. I could tell. Maybe she wouldn't leave there after all and come to where the fields and grass and sky and not much else. What if she comes and doesn't like our house? Caleb asked. I told her it was small. Maybe I shouldn't have told her it was small. Hush, Caleb, hush. Caleb's letter came soon after with a picture of a cat drawn on the envelope. Dear Caleb, my cat's name is Seal because she is gray, like the seals that swim offshore in Maine. She is glad that Lottie and Nick send their greetings. She likes dogs most of the time. She says their footprints are much larger than hers, which she is enclosing in return. Your house sounds lovely, even though it is far out in the country with no close neighbors. My house is tall and the shingles are gray because of the salt from the sea. There are roses nearby. Yes, I do like small rooms sometimes. I guess, yes, I can keep a fire going at night. I do not know if I snore. Seal has never told me. Yours, very truly yours, Sarah Elizabeth. Did you really ask her about fires and snoring? I asked, amazed. I wished to know, Caleb said. He kept the letter with him and reading it in the barn and in the fields and by the cow pond and always in bed at night. One morning early, Papa and Caleb we're clearing out the horse stalls and putting down new bedding. Papa stopped suddenly and leaned on his pitchfork. Sarah has said she will come for a month's time if we wish her to, he said. His voice sounded in the dark, sound, his voice loud in the dark barn. To see how it is, just to see. Caleb stood by the stall and folded his arms across his chest. I think, he began. Then I think, he said slowly, that would be good to say yes. He finished in a rush. Papa looked at me. I say yes, I told him, grinning. Yes, said Papa. Then yes, it is. And the three of us all smiling went to work again. The next day, Papa went to town to mail his letter to Sarah. It was rainy for days and the clouds followed. The house was cool and damp and quiet. Once I set four places at the table, then caught myself and put the extra plate away. Three lambs were born, one with a black face, and then Papa's letter came. Dear Jacob, I will come by train. I will wear a yellow bonnet. I am plain and tall, Sarah. What's that? Asked Caleb excitedly. Peering over Papa's shoulder, he pointed. There, written at the bottom of the letter. Papa read it to himself. Then he smiled, holding up the letter for us to see. Tell them I sing, was all it said. And tomorrow, we will read Sarah Plain and Tall. Just a little hello to you kiddos. Hopefully this is working. I just turned it around. I hope you had a good day. I am going to work over the next few days to come up with some ways to make um, some lessons to go along and help you with next week's lessons online. I miss you. I hope you're all doing fine. I'll talk to you soon. See you tomorrow for chapter three.